In the past 20 years, there's been a massive increase in people being diagnosed with mental health disorders. Along with this, there has been an increase within the presence of the media, films, and TV in our day-to-day -day lives. The largest group of people who have been affected by this are children and young adults under 25. 10% of this age group have been diagnosed with mental health disorders. I've been diagnosed with depression and anxiety. Anxiety. I am a recovered anorexic and I still struggle with depression. Depression and anxiety. I have Tourette's syndrome, OCD and anxiety. Um, I don't think so. Not really. I mean, I was... I was bullied a bit, but like, I don't think that makes me depressed, you know what I mean? Um, somewhat, yeah. Like, family history and school history. Uh, I had a strange upbringing, but especially when I went and to comp and started getting older, I saw all these pretty girls and I started getting into social media and society's impacted the way I view myself and when I was younger that caused me to get an eating disorder. Um, a lot of it can be other factors like learning difficulties, I know uh, they're a big part of mine, um, they added a lot of stress onto me to day to day life. My OCD when I was younger really used to be really bad to the point where I used to have weird things like if I were going into a room I'd kind of have to both my feet would have to touch the floor before I entered the new room. I have to kind of stop and then step in. It was weird. And um, I used to have a thing with touching like people and things. I used to wear gloves a lot. And I used to, if I had to turn lights off and things, I'd have to wear gloves to turn on. Uh, about two years from like going through cams and stuff? Um, probably about a year. Well, I struggled for about two years and then it got to the point where I was so ill that I just got diagnosed and then sent to hospital. Um, well, it's different for everyone. Unfortunately, it took me a very long time. Um, I felt personally like I was depressed since I was 12. I'd mentioned it to my mum, she said, oh, stop being silly. Basically glanced it off um, till I got to year 10, where uh, my mum caught me self-harming and trying to kill myself. Um, so she took me to the doctors, I got then diagnosed with depression. Um, so yeah, it's, it's different for everyone, unfortunately. I got glanced off at a very early age. Um, and it ended up me trying to commit suicide, self-harming, stuff like that. With Tourette's and OCD, well, my mum and dad started noticing symptoms when I was about four, and I didn't get diagnosed until I was about ten. Um, I don't know. Like, obviously, with the anxiety, it's harder to do things that I want to do because I'm too anxious to do it. Or, you know, I can't be in like massive crowds without getting scared. So I can't go to gigs as much as I want to. And I don't know, but depression, it's just hard to get motivated. You know what I mean? Uh, it can sometimes be difficult to build up confidence and difficult talking to people as well sometimes. Well, since I struggle with depression too, and not so much an eating disorder anymore, um, some days are worse than others, some days I wake up and I'm fine, other days I wake up and I'm in a low mood and that can bring back reminiscence of 
the eating disorder days as well. Take it one day at a time, I guess. Um, a lot, it affects me in many different ways. My mood will be down, so I won't want to interact with people. Um, I won't want to talk to people. Um, I won't even feel like I'm worth anything. Um, so I put myself down quite a lot. Fortunately, I feel like I'm not achieve, like able to achieve anything because of it. Um, so I put myself down quite a bit for that. It used to be a lot worse. It's not as bad now. It costs, it's strange with mine. It seems to come on and then go for a long time. Like I get it and it just, it's really bad. And then it just goes. The worst is like, Occasionally my eyes get really sore because I blink a lot, so... Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Um, there's situations where it's like... You don't feel as open talking to people, but if it's with someone you trust, then I don't see reason not to. Um, personally, no. But I understand a lot of guys and a lot of men do uh, struggle with talking about their feelings and uh, any problems that they have. A lot of a lot of them are reluctant to go to the doctors, for example, and stuff like that. But me personally, I'm very quite open about it, um, just because I believe honesty is the best policy. I think it is because men are kind of meant to be like nothing's meant to phase them. Yeah, no, I do. I think that if you ask a woman if she's going to therapy and she says, yeah, it's like, oh, she's just going to therapy. But if you ask a man, it's sort of like a bit different, isn't it? You sort of like, whoa, he goes to therapy, he must be a bit crazy. Um, yes, uh, I think it's statistically, like on average, I think men kind of repress their feelings a lot more. So naturally, like when it comes to mental health, that'll, it'll be more repressed and so people won't be as comfortable with talking about it openly. Definitely, especially when it comes to eating disorders. No one really talks about anorexic boys. It's, it's always about models and girls, really. Um, yes and no, I believe that a lot of times, this links to like the last question, a lot of times when men get mental health they don't talk about it or they don't want to talk about it. Um, so it kind of gets resembled as, oh yeah, men are these tough guys who can't get depression, who, who basically are always happy, stuff like that. Uh, when actually inside we're very emotional. Um, luckily for me I'm very open about my emotions, I'm, very, I'm a very emotional guy. Um, however, a lot of guys are completely the opposite. They'll shut themselves down from emotions. They'll, they'll believe that, oh, if they cry, they're not a man, when that's not true. Um, and it, it can also hinder their uh, mental health themselves uh, by thinking that. I think there's a stigma around mental health in general, no matter what gender you are. Twenty years ago, it was reported that only two percent of the nation's population had a mental health disorder. Now it's around twenty-five percent. What do you think caused that number to rise so dramatically? Um, what was it? Twenty years ago, you said. Twenty years, yeah. I mean, I feel like there's a lot less stigma around mental health, so people are more likely to go and see a professional about it, and obviously get diagnosed with it. So. And I think people are more aware that people have mental health disorders now. You know, they don't just think that they're a bit loopy, they've actually got something wrong with them. Um, I think social media has probably had a massive like, factor into that because, you know, no one can really do anything without knowingly being judged in this day and age. But I also think... A, because uh, it's reported cases, I think that people might have grown more in sort of 
being open with their emotions than they were 20 odd years ago and uh, feel more comfortable like talking to different people about it I feel like technology has had a factor in that social media can impact people especially young minds and cause them to think differently about themselves and about the world which can be quite toxic uh, well personally um, I know that uh, well personally I believe that back then it wasn't aware so I believe that the same amount of people that have not the exact same but roughly the same percentage of people that have depression now had depression back then or any other mental illness not just depression um, and we've just become more aware of it um, especially through media um, and just all around awareness within schools and stuff like that being taught about it from an early age it's been a really good factor to awareing this but I believe that that 25% isn't all of it there's probably going to be a lot more people a lot higher percentage that have a mental illness of some sort but we're just not aware of them or they have not come forward because of it it depends on your views of mental health. A lot of films portray mental health uh, through depression and stuff like that and maybe the main protagonist is going through a depressive stage, they're trying to get through it. However, I believe that the media does help with raising awareness, even if it's portrayed badly, you're still raising awareness. Um, so if anything, the media is helping raise awareness for mental health, even if it is portrayed badly. Social media. In recent years, there has been a boom in addressing mental health through media, especially films and TV. The largest group of people who have been affected by this are children and young adults under 25. 10% of this age group have been diagnosed with mental health disorders. There have been numerous films from many genres, such as Hannibal Lecter and The End of the Fucking World, portraying psychopaths, Bojack Horseman and The Royal Tenenbaums, displaying depression. A lot of the time, it is represented in a good way. However, when there's good representation, there's always bad. In 2017, Netflix released the show, 13 Reasons Why. Season one starts with the audience discovering a young girl, Hannah Baker, has committed suicide. The first season follows the 13 reasons why Hannah killed herself through 13 tapes through the perspective of Clay Jensen. The problem with the show is it romanticizes and glorifies the idea of depression, suicide, and self-harm, and was very unrealistic. Along with this, it was targeted at teenagers, who are very easily manipulated by the media, along with film and TV. Netflix received a lot of backlash. So yeah, the idea here is that we are hearing this story through a narrator because the main character, in quotes, is actually deceased. There's a new Netflix drama called 13 Reasons Why. The criticism that the shows glorifies suicide. Psychologists and critics of the show say it trivializes the act of suicide and doesn't go deep enough into the issue of mental health. Graphic depiction of suicide. Journalist Hattie Gladwell talked about this specific scene and said how it was somewhat glorifying self-harm and how the show concentrated on what people had done. She also goes on to say how Hannah is depicted as a beautiful and tragic character. But more needs to be done. More educational programming and content that shows that help is available, that recovery is possible, that treatment works. Yep, I have. Late 2018, so I was quite late to the party, but so the end of last year. Uh, no, I thought it glamorised mental health in a way, it made it more um, wanted in the kind of mainstream uh, outlook, so I felt it was very misrepresented in a way. Yeah, because it romanticised the idea of having a mental health disorder, 
so it was all about um it was for me in the in the wider world it made people want to have disorders which means that you're slowly diluting the actual meaning and the actual kind of cry for help that people who do suffer you, you know you, you're diluting that and you're making it maybe less significant as than it should be so i feel it was very damaging to yeah definitely very damaging to the wider world no um, basically there were three girls on america they had no relation to each other at all mm -hmm. they lived in different parts of the country and basically all three of them had killed themselves and left behind 13 tapes exactly like ah, the show. okay that's a bit twisted i guess it's almost like obviously they definitely took inspiration from the from the tv show that's kind of worrying actually that people would do that like obviously as media creators ourselves we, we hope that people take what we do uh, as what it should be like entertainment value but sometimes people are easily kind of led and easily and you know they are impressionable people and i guess that's really sad that that occurred do, do you know the follow-up that you know, like kind of what happened after or? Um, I remember that family tried to sue the people who made okay. things, why, but they lost the case because they said it is necessarily our fault. Yeah, I guess, I guess in a legal sense I can understand why they'd win that case because obviously they didn't force the girls to do that, they didn't, I guess they claim that they didn't influence it, mm -hmm. but at the same time I can understand the parents kind of side that clearly they didn't influence it, why would they leave 13 tapes behind if not? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I can... I can see both sides to the argument there, but obviously, you know, the mo morally you'd think that the parents would win that case, but business is business, I guess. Yeah, possibly. You can see in certain in episodes where she shows stereotypical signs of it, which I think, again, lies in that 13 Reasons Why um, relies heavily on, like, stereotypical kind of, kind of senses and triggers and that kind of thing. Um, whereas for a lot of people, sometimes that's not the case. So yeah, I think I think she is, but I think it was like a bit forced upon us that she is. It was too obvious. There was too many stereotypical kind of tells. Well, I know that it starts from uh, young children, between 1 and 3% of young children in the UK are suffering um, with mental health disorder, but when um, that age group goes up to teenagers and young people, it does dramatically increase. Um, statistically, I think it's about 1 in 10, um, but that's only people that have been diagnosed with a disorder, which means they've got to have come forward first. Um, and I think there's still kind of a stigma around people talking about mental health. So not as many people come forward, but that's obviously increased. At an early age, I think it definitely relates uh, to home life. So that, you know, the child's start in life can fully depend on how uh, resilient they are going into adulthood. So it could be from suffering from any sort of abuse, whether that's just simply child neglect or deeper physical abuse, sexual abuse, etc. I think it can also stem from an unbalanced life um, if they've not had a steady home, if they've been moved around a lot, etc. Um, it can also stem from um, parent substance abuse, so it can stem from if they have parents who are regular uh, drink alcohol, take drugs. Um, I also think it can come from um, schools, I think schools play a massive part, so and not being diagnosed properly. Um, so if somebody say has a form of autism, a behavioural issue, an anger issue and a school just dismisses it of them being naughty, they get put into isolation etc. That then makes that person bottle up about the feelings and I think that carries on throughout the life. Um, I think it could also stem from bullying. You know a lot of children that have experienced quite serious bullying uh, that can result in mental health issues definitely. Um, I think there's loads of kind of determining factors. I don't think there's one particular thing. Um, I think it's a combination of 
different stresses that we face. Um, things are a lot more easily available that maybe young people never had to deal with when uh, in kind of years past. So things such as the internet and um, social media and stuff give people access instantly to certain things that they wouldn't have known about necessarily. Um, and I think that combined with kind of the hardship that's faced in, by a lot of people in society, um, be that with finances or kind of the way that they're being brought up, I think there's so many different factors that kind of would influence that, that picking one is kind of impossible. I do think the media is partially to blame because unfortunately young people nowadays have uncontrollable access to social media, um, you know, something that I'm quite fortunate wasn't around when I was primary school age. I think the content they can access is quite scary, it's not regulated properly. Um, you know, there has been dangerous YouTube video challenges and things that um, people have undertook. Um, I've heard of like a suicide game, which is incredibly scary, but also in terms of mental health problems with the social media, there's been a lot of body issues, body shaming, I think, you know, you look on Instagram, it's full of these beautiful people that you'd love to look like, but you know you're never going to, uh, there can be negativity, bullying uh, spread across Facebook, which hasn't been regulated very, you know, professionally in the past, and I do think as well now, because they're so in contact with each other all the time, children, young people can never escape from being harassed and tormented on social media. Um, again, I think depending on the source of the media, um, I don't think it's the only cause of kind of heightened um, emotional distress, but it's definitely a big factor because it is so widespread now. I don't think there's a person that hasn't got some form of social media, kind of all media generally, uh, access. So I think they show certain things that maybe are going to get more ratings if it was a broadcast kind of thing. Um, they also are edited to then put out whatever image and things is wanted to be seen by the person producing that. So again, I think it's kind of biased there's, although there is a lot more truth now and a lot more people kind of coming forward with their own personal stories, so there's a lot more truth in that respect, but also it's something that's shaped by the media in terms of what they want to represent. There is anybody out there, young or old, suffering mentally and they're not quite sure what to do. I know this is easier said than done, but talk to somebody. If it's a family member, if it's if you're in education, somebody in that establishment in work, you know, go to the NHS, there is services out there that can support you and maybe your family as well. Um, there's CAMS, there's um, things like, um, you know, you could go down the medication route, the counselling route. I think it's just important that we spread awareness uh, that mental health is just as important as physical health.